This episode is brought to you by Iterable. You want to be able to do cool things with your emails, with your data, with your customers? Take a look at Iterable. See, they have this thing called an integrated cross-channel solution, which is just a fancy way of saying it was built for marketers, trusted by engineers, and designed with intelligence. You want to be intelligent? You want to be able? Get Iterable. What's up, Matthew Smith? What's up, Emo Geeks? Welcome back to another Feedback Friday. This week with a special guest. Special. Hey, we're so stoked. Yeah, we've got Rob Hope here who has launched Email Love, which is adding this beautiful new gallery to the internet to show off. There is care, there is love for email, and it's not dying. It hasn't even hit its heyday. And it's so rad to have a fellow email lover on with us, hailing from South Africa. So welcome today, bud. Thank you, Matthew. Hey, Matt. Uh, Glad to be here, guys. I've been watching your series on YouTube for the past little while and just getting better and better. So yeah, really grateful to join. Well, we're about to skyrocket now with you on, man. It's going to be next level. (laughs) (laughs) Hashtag distribution. Uh, That's right. Mm. (laughs) That's awesome, man. All right, cool. Well, today we're going to dig into some emails that you helped pick out. And the first one we've got is hard graft. So I'm going to drive here, but man, I'd love you to start us off and have a go at this and start telling us what's working in this email and what's not. Cool. So, I mean, hard graft was one of the first brands that I was subscribed to that I just had to open every single newsletter Mm. by them. They had this unique white space. You know, there was just subtleties, attention to detail. Their product imagery is phenomenal. Mm-hmm. But yeah, and this email is really interesting for me because it's announcing a new product for sure. And it talks about the two-in-one sling bag and it's, you know, the product image is pretty good. Um, recently, they've moved to the central logo that overlays the image, which I don't particularly love. But then you just like scroll down a bit. And if you look at the CTA where it goes, take a look, you know, I thought that could be just a little bit more visual uh, standout from the whole email. You'll notice if you scroll down to the footer, they use this like little subtle red. I think that's like a candy cane icon or something, but like maybe sure. just a nice red CTA, keep it minimal, subtle. But if right. you scroll back up, you'll see where the second headline, as it goes, take a look, it goes off gray alternatives. And that's not even a link. Oh, and, man. Yeah. And that's like sort of a heading. It's not clickable. It feels like a mistake to me. Uh, maybe they haven't linked it, but. Um, Again, just one more critique. And these guys, for me, they send great emails. But for me, second, they used their Made in Italy twice. Mm -hmm. And I I just feel like it's it's just lost that classiness. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I'm being critical. I'm a huge fan of this brand. (laughs) Um, But but yeah, I'd love to know what you guys think. We walk this line with you, man. It's um, it's such an interesting play. Like we want to be super positive, but we also hear from some of our fans sometimes, like you guys are being soft. Yeah. <laughs> like, get back out there. Let's go. Cool. So I think it is important. Like our audience tends to want to know how do we make our emails better. Help us understand what is suffering. So to your point, what I see here is they are violating some really core design pattern language rules that are super helpful to. To the user, right? So imagine coming into a brand new universe and you come to one stop sign and you've got a big red octagon and boom, stop. Bright white letters on this red background. Okay, okay, that's what stop means. And then you get to the next one and it's a triangle and it has a dinosaur in it. And it's like, wait, is that is that stop or is that beware of dinosaurs? I don't know, <laughs> right? And I know this sounds absurd, but like that's kind of what's happening here, right? So we've got an underline, which is a universal call to, you know, a link, right? Like we've understood that since Berners-Lee put, you know, the internet together and like, boom, we've got underlines. Cool. Nope, that one's not a link. Oh, this one is. The only indication we have is that we have this cursor pointer, which you know, obviously, you know, this is, an image and is a full width button situation here. So it's not Mm. bulletproof, no need for it to be this way. It's the modern era. We can put custom fonts and it's not expensive. We like to work sometimes with Fathom and Draft, my design agency. We work with uplers who are great email coders. And as long as you're like very, very specific and you know what you're doing, like we're talking like this email would maybe be $150. 
it's super affordable, right? So anyway, the, the point is like, don't use, you know, these non-custom fonts when you don't have to yeah. and get your design system to say, okay, we always will have links be this color, links be this way, headings be this way so that there's no confusion. I really agree with that. I mean, it even goes down. This one's a link. These are links. This is not a link. This is not a link. Super confusing. But the aesthetic is really beautiful. Like they've done a great job of making an email with a limited palette. And I think one of the core sins of most emails that we get and have to reject is this overload of color and it's done unintentionally. Like, I guess you could do an overload of color and that'd be interesting, but it's not. Oftentimes it's overwhelming. So, you know, I agree. This is a beautiful email, but really lacking some of those user experience fundamentals that really make it very useful. Does that make sense? Is that, do you guys agree? Yeah, I think to me, the difference really is the desktop and mobile layouts. I think they're pretty good, but in a few cases, they sort of have dropped the ball. I think like the single switching from the three to the single is pretty successful, but like that headline off gray alternatives is really small on mobile. Mm -hmm. There's some small little tweaks, I guess, around that because that now looks more like a CTA, but as you said, it's not clickable. Mm -hmm. So I think some other brands that are really featuring these products, maybe like a moment or something, do a little bit better of a job, mm -hmm. just putting them front and center. Like there's just a kind of too much content maybe for me to, to really figure out what's going on. I guess the text is really important, but to me, I'm really more about this individual product and maybe talking a little bit more about like how you would use it or examples throughout this email. So I think it gets me to the site, but you know, it's a little lacking for me on this one. Cool. If I could add one bit is that, you know, in the past, they've got this founders section um, at the bottom of the, of most emails. And if you actually read the blurb there, you know, they're talking about 13 years in the game. Uh, this is, I think it's a couple, they care. And they started adding this real subtle image in other emails, which I think had them sitting next to each other on the couch and it had like loafers that were matching. And that just felt like they really cared about their products. You know, like um, Jeff from Ugmunk, you know, that That's guy, right. he's using his products and he's only releasing them once he's actually tried them out properly. And that's, I feel this founder's block is, is great. But also I want to, I want to know who these people are. Uh, mm -hmm. I feel like that was also could you could just add to that to be very picky, but I love how they end off with hold on to the good actual first names. Uh, we're here, we're experiencing our own products. And you know, like when people are spending time trying out their own products, you know, they're going to be good. This is going to be a quality. This is a great example of an email that has a lot of room to grow, but is already doing some good work, right? One of the things I've, I've talked about on other episodes, and I, I talk about a lot in my design work is playing design golf. Golf is this game, of course, that you try and keep your score as low as possible, right? So if we think about how to keep the score low on differences, mm -hmm. right? So we have a heading that's, you know, one. Now we have type two. So that's two points. Now we have a CTA, three. Now we have a slightly different heading, four. Yeah. We have made in Italy, five. We have this type of line, six. Uh, we have another type of line, seven. We have these, you know, which now are eight, you know, and then we have this heading. Now it's nine, now this text, 10, you know, et cetera. And arguably 11 now, 12, you know, so what if you could eliminate six of those and really get this tighter? And to your point, Rob, like love the use of red, what an awesome way to call out that initial CTA. And my guess is that they'd see some improvement in the actions that they want people to take. If you believe in your product, then you believe like this really will serve people and the email, you know, having a design system like this really does serve them. So great job, hard graft. Been following you guys for a long time, you all, and uh, really appreciate the email and, you know, go get you some, some awesome gear. If you're into this kind of thing, this is, this is definitely up my alley. And well, Rob, it's really fun to have you here today. And I think we'll end up doing a few more episodes together. Uh, what's going on in, in South Africa this Friday? Cheap as I was just telling Matt, we're experiencing a little bit of load shedding um, and we have mm. no power for a couple hours a day. Oh, wow. It's from some negligence and maintenance from years or even decades ago. So I, 
I work around the power schedule, so the power was off about two hours ago. So I'm I'm stoked this meeting was when it was. <laughs> Happy Friday to everybody. Happy Friday, Matt Heldvig. Really appreciate you all. And don't forget Unspam, March 12th and 13th coming right up. So excited. Awesome. All right. See everybody out Peace. there. Ciao, guys. If you have any feedback on the series, please leave a comment down below. Hit subscribe to keep up with future episodes. Thank you for giving a listen and letting our sponsors know you love really good emails. Sometimes they think that I'm really a computer, and I don't really mind that.